when I rented the title of CEO, I almost quit. I remember calling the owner and going, fire me before I ruin Essence. Welcome to The Path, where I, Ryan Roslansky, sit down with the biggest change makers, innovators, and thought leaders in the world. At the end, we'll see what turning points shaped the journey of these incredible success stories. Today, I sit down with Caroline Wonga. Caroline spent 15 years at Target, working her way up from intern to chief diversity and inclusion officer. Until one day, she left retail for a career in media when she landed the role of CEO of Essence. Her path is as atypical as it gets. Here's how Caroline Wonga paved her path. You're an amazing CEO, entrepreneur, but let's go way, way back. Way back. To a young Caroline. Yes. Maybe the first time in your childhood when you can ever remember at all even thinking about maybe what you wanted to be when you grew up. I, so I'm from Kenya, right? And I was born in a country where what I looked like was not a barrier. The president, the pastor, the policeman, they all look like me transition to my dad comes to the U.S. to get his Ph.D. And so for the first time, there were things that were barriers based on what I looked like or who I was that I didn't understand. And so it actually started probably about an 18-year journey of making myself small. I started to get rid of my accent. I wouldn't invite anybody over to my house because my food smelled funny. When I left high school, I got pregnant my first semester in college. I decided to be a mom, so I went to work. After Caroline dropped out of college, she started her career in the nonprofit world, working in youth development programming. But after seven years of hard work, she was being passed over for promotions because she didn't have a college degree. She said she was frustrated, but she knew that without that piece of paper, her career wouldn't grow. She eventually found a school in Texas with a single parent program. It gave her the resources to raise her daughter while in college. Around that time, she landed an internship at Target and eventually a manager role before she even graduated. I decided Target was cool, but I didn't know what, what the hell I want to do now, right? Some great mentors had me decide four experiences I wanted to have. So you put them all down at I once? I put them all on paper. Love it literally was laid out like a flow chart. So I show that document to my HR partner and my boss, and I say, these are the things I want to do. Of course, she ended up doing every single thing on that list. I ended up being an ERG leader of our Black Affinity Group. And for the first time, I met the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. So inquired about it and decided that if I was going to serve my time in corporate, that was where I was going to work because it was the closest thing corporate had to a soul. Remember, I'm a nonprofit girl. Mm-hmm. So I drew another map, literally drew it. This one had VP of DNI at the top. She shared that map with her boss, with HR, and the then VP of diversity and inclusion at Target, the job she wanted. That takes guts, which is a great lesson to keep in mind. One of the first steps towards reaching your career goals is to be vocal about what you want. Because she spoke up, it only took a few years for Caroline to land at the top of her map. My job became to create environments where authenticity was democratized. I got scared. I was like, how in the world is my job to tell people they can come as they are? And there's a whole bunch of stuff about me that I'm not living honestly. And I remember the first thing I did was cut my hair and I started locks because I remember having been told that that wasn't appropriate in corporate America. And I spent that whole week worried that I was gonna get fired. So when I realized that didn't change, I was like, bam, blue lipstick. Nobody cared. So what I towed into reintroducing Caroline. Caroline was finally bringing her authentic self to work, which inspired others to do the same. And as head of DNI, she introduced company wide goals at Target including diversifying the employee base, the company's suppliers, and even the dolls on the shelves. She was making her mark in corporate America as an effective and compassionate leader. Meanwhile, in a completely different industry, Essence was embroiled in a controversy about its culture 
and its owner was looking for someone to propel the company mission forward, for Essence to be a trusted home for Black culture. And the name Caroline Wanga came across his desk. And I'm like, you want who to come run Essence? I'm not a media girl. Like, I'm not gonna break that thing. (laughs) What I was actually told about why it was time for me to do that was because of the way that I was living my life and how they wanted that to be a part of what I delivered in the role. Had I not made that decision, this opportunity doesn't come. That last part though, that jump to becoming the CEO, that's not an easy like mental jump to me. When I rented the title of CEO, I almost quit. I remember calling the owner and going, fire me before I ruin essence. The amount of doubt in terms of leadership, in terms of fiscal responsibility, in terms of the pain, the haters, the everything under the sun became really heavy. When I made that call to the owner, he said two things to me that to this day are what get me through the hardest days of CEO. It is how you live your life that this brand needs because it has always been an inspiration that pulled the culture forward. The second thing he said was, when I called around about you, you won everywhere you went. He said, I just want somebody who knows how to win. Mm. Those two statements did so much to resolve that inner saboteur. It's still there, it pops up on a daily basis. On the days where that inner saboteur is like, you can't be a CEO. I go back to those two things. Since 2020, Caroline has served as CEO, tasked with reshaping Essence's future in media. That same year, she and her daughter, Cadence, co-founded Wonga Woman, where Caroline uses her experience to teach leaders, companies, and professionals about the importance of authenticity. How do you answer that question for someone who wants to do what you did or wants to be like what you've become? Who you are is who you are. Mm. If you cannot be who you are, where you are, you change where you are, not who you are. There are so many opportunities that I missed making myself small. And those that are moving into early career have an opportunity to change the way of working that centers on the who. My second one is it is never about a role. It is always about an experience. The people who get tapped on the shoulder and you're like, why didn't I never know about that job? Those are the people that spend their time looking for experiences, not jobs. Because in those experiences, they meet the person who does the shoulder tap for the job that was never going to be posted, that just got approved by the board yesterday. (laughs) Boom, here's our new VP or whatever. How do you answer that question? (laughs) Let me to follow that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I would say, similar to your map concept, I make everyone draw a two by two. Mm. I want you to pick the two things that matter most to you in your career. And they're often something like learning Mm -hmm. or there's something like impact. They actually are rarely title. And then it becomes simple because you're either in the top right of that quadrant of the things that you care about Mm -hmm. or you're not. And if you're not, you know how to fix it. Yep. And then it becomes less about all the noise and Mm -hmm. what I should be doing or what my mom thinks I should be Mm -hmm. doing or it's Mm -hmm. you have control of it and follow it this way. So I think that just having that you know, ability to take control of your own career and have a map to it uh, is something that we both share in common. So here's my takeaway. For a lot of people, particularly people of color, there's something or someone that tells you to change who you are when you enter the workforce, to conceal your authentic self. And you don't have to. For Caroline, making herself small and invisible was what she thought would bring her success. As an immigrant, she wanted to fit in. She went back to college even though she didn't want to and spent years climbing the corporate ladder as somebody else. Along the way, Caroline had maps with career destinations, constantly negotiating the path to get there and realized she shouldn't have ever negotiated who she was for the sake of a title. And once she embraced the locks and that blue lipstick, a swarm of opportunities opened up and made it her mission for others to do the same.